According to new calculations from the advocacy organization, the Ontario Living Wage Network, minimum wage just isn't cutting it for people in many communities. Justin Chandler covers Hamilton Niagara for Ontario Hubs, and he joins us now to explain. Hello, Justin. Hey there. All right, so the Ontario Living Wage Network has been around since 2017, but I don't think a lot of people know what a living wage is when you compare it to a minimum wage. Break it down for us. So a minimum wage, this is the rate, uh, that's the minimum amount that an employer is allowed to pay you for an hour of work. This is set by the province in Ontario since October, that's $15.50. So a living wage is born from the idea that earning minimum wage is not enough to really thrive in a community to fully participate. And so it's a calculation that uh, this group does to try and show the amount that you need, not just to get by, but to, to be part of a community. So to be able to you know, go out to eat once in a while or uh, go out and use the bus, um, there's a small entertainment budget. So it's, it's trying to set a rate uh, that people would need to earn uh, working you know, full time in order to you know, just have a little bit more than just scrape and buy on minimum wage, which is uh, unfortunately what people have to do if they're earning that rate. All right, let's get a little granular here. How exactly is a living wage determined? So the way that the Living Wage Network has calculated this since 2021 uh, is they take three representative uh, situations, or let's call them representative households. So there's a single adult, there's a family of two adults and two young children, and then there's a single parent. And so they look at these situations, they look at the amount of government support they might be getting, and they look at based on the community that they live in, um, how much they would need to buy a basket of goods. And so this includes you know, food, housing, transportation, internet, um, so some things like that. And uh, then what they do is they weight that average based on the amount of that types of families, and they look at for each region what the living wage would be. And so they do this actually all over the province, and there's several different rates depending on where you live. Now, this year's calculations were a little bit different, also not, not just the numbers themselves and how they calculate it, but also the geography. Can you break this down a little bit for us? Mm -hmm. They used to do something like 50 different uh, communities based more on political boundaries, and the Living Wage Network was not able to update these every year. So now what they've done is they've moved to uh, Statistics Canada uh, sort of economic groupings. Uh, so they're actually looking at the entire province now, and they've grouped many different communities together, uh, more geographically. So we're looking now, for the most part, at bigger areas uh, than we were before. But this means that they're able to update it more regularly, and they're able to capture the entire province. Well, let's have a look at those updated numbers. Here's a graph, Justin. And I'm hoping you can sort of take us through some of the numbers and, and what they reflect. Yes. Yeah, so this is some of the communities that they're doing. So the greater Toronto area. Uh, what we're seeing there is the living wage rates, the amount that you'd need to be earning uh, is $23.15. For Hamilton, it's $19.05. For Brant, Niagara, Haldeman, Norfolk, it's $19.80. So uh, for these ones, we're looking at, you know, housing costs have gone up a ton as Toronto's become more expensive. That's really rippled through Hamilton. Uh, that's rippled through Niagara and just the areas surrounding. The costs have sort of gone up south and then moved through the peninsula. So we're really seeing a cost increase there. In Hamilton, you can see the current rate is $19.05. Last year, it was $17.20. So you can really see uh, this is a community where the living wage has gone up quite a bit. Um, inflation's driven up all sorts of costs. We've also seen a significant increase in Hamilton in the price of housing. I know since I moved uh, to Hamilton a couple of years ago, rent, uh, asking rents for two bedroom apartments, for example, has gone up over 20%. So people are really um, feeling the cost of housing. That's a big problem throughout uh, the GTA and the Hamilton Niagara area. The whole Golden Horseshoe has seen the cost of housing radiate outwards from Toronto as prices have gone up there. For Ottawa, we're at 1960. For Eastern Ontario, 1905. For Northern Ontario, 1970. Uh, Northern Ontario is particularly interesting as well. Sault Ste. Marie saw the biggest increase of all the communities that they've got listed. It actually went from uh, 1620 to 1970. Um, so now it's part of this Northern group uh, and it, the rate's gone up. But in the North, uh, we're seeing a lot of things are particularly expensive. Uh, transportation costs, notably much more so than the South, same with communications, food costs. 
And for the Southwest there, we're seeing 1815. The lowest rate in the province is actually 1805, which is in London, Elgin, Oxford. Now, Justin, I want to talk about uh, employers. There's a little bit of, we'll call it bragging rights, but the Ontario Living Wage Network certifies employers who pay their employees a living wage. Do we have an idea of how many employers actually are taking part in this initiative? So they certify about 500 employers. Um, but there could also be employers who are paying this rate who um, aren't in touch with the living wage network and so therefore haven't uh, gotten this certification. Um, the network uses some funding from I think, credit unions and from uh, members in order to run. Uh, so it, it's possible there's just people who aren't participating um, but who are in fact paying that. All right, I know you spoke to a number of people for your article on tbo.org and I'm curious, what did they say about what it would take for this idea to be more universal? Yeah, there's a number of things here whenever it comes to, to trying to push for wages. But one of the biggest things, at least locally, that we've seen in Hamilton is advocacy um, around cities. So trying to get uh, the city to pay a living wage, which is something that advocates have been successful with uh, to a certain degree. So it used to be that uh, not all employees in the city were at the living wage. Um, in recent years, they have been. Um, however, there, it, so far, advocates have been unsuccessful in getting the city to pay summer students a living wage. So that's currently a push right now. And then the goal is to get them to pay subcontractors a living wage as well. So there are municipalities that do this. The regional municipality of Waterloo is a recent example where they're paying all employees, students, and subcontractors that living wage. And the idea is that when you've got this big public employer and it's the city, um, that there's maybe some cachet to saying, you know, this is more of a living wage community now, or um, the city's going to do this, so we hope that other businesses will do the same. Uh, there's also a lot of advocacy just generally in trying to get employers to do this. And uh, the pitch is sort of, you know, people need this. Uh, people need to be able to participate in the community, but that it's also good for the community overall. If people aren't just scraping by and they can actually afford to, you know, spend some money that they're earning, that goes back into the economy. Um, and that, uh, that helps out everybody. That's the pitch. Justin, thank you so much for joining us on the program tonight. You take care. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.